What is up guys? Welcome back to the Comic Cave. This week we've got Black Hammer Omnibus Volume 1 in the cave and we're going to review this one. Yes. Yeah, this is a book that we it kind of flew under our radar. I think it came out during the time that we were on a hiatus from comics and this was the Eisner winner for best new series. Yeah. We missed out big time. Yes, we did. <laughs> to say the least. But fortunately, we had so many people telling us about it. Um that we just had to pick it up and check it out for ourselves and damn dude like just first impressions what was it to you like what did you guys think well jeff lemire knocked it out of the park man it was fantastic fantastic writing fantastic art from dean armstone everybody did a fantastic job i enjoyed it yeah I, cover to cover it was it was great it was like a perfect comic i think man yeah and i think i've talked to you guys and i'm willing to go on record and say that i think that this is our generation's watchman absolutely I, I couldn't agree more i think in just the way that it breaks down not only the comic book um culture but also just everything about the superhero uh, genre it doesn't only break it down it i feel like it adds a lot to it yeah exactly it's I, I was saying earlier, like it's a uh, it's deconstructionist, but it's it's a lot more hopeful feeling than Watchmen. Um, Definitely. Yeah, it yeah. just seems like a brighter world, even though they're still dealing with uh, some dark stuff. Yeah, and like most uh, Jeff Lemire comics, this starts off with a uh, on a farm setting. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much everything that he's done has started off on a farm or somewhere. Um, but we get introduced to these uh, superheroes. Um, which we, you know, dive heavily into. Um, they've arrived on this world, and they're kind of st stuck there. And they're, they're celebrating their 10-year anniversary being there. Yeah. Being and stuck there. And they're still not sure where they are. They just know that they can't leave past a certain point. Right. Or they literally disappear, right? They right. Disappear, well, the, the title character, Black Hammer, is, uh, he, he was with them when they first arrived, tried to leave. And uh, he's gone, so that's how they know they can't leave. And this takes superheroes from pretty much every every piece of lore you can imagine. Um, the little girl is actually what a sixty or seventy year old woman trapped in a little girl's body. A um, seven year old girl's body. Seven year old girl's yeah. body, and it's equivalent to uh, Shazam, right? Captain Marvel, however you want to call him. Um, we have the father-like figure who is like the Captain America. Um, there's a Golden Gale. There we go. She was probably my favorite one, to be honest. I oh, she's, 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 she's the most scary. tormented one yeah, there. Yeah, she and is. she's the one that gives the least amount of Fs. Yeah. Drinking, smoking, getting in trouble left and right and not caring. And playing the charade of a seven-year-old having to go to school right. every day still. I'm playing that. She's like drunk when she's getting ready to go on a bus and he's like really it's the morning time she's like i gotta get through this day somehow yeah and then we have the uh robot that's a throwback to the sci-fi era of comic books those old like 50s it's very good it, the design is like super magnola i feel but oh or definitely. some matt wagner oh yeah yeah matt wagner yeah. too We've got, got Colonel uh, Weird. Colonel Weird, who's like Adam Strange. And Adam and, um, Strange, yeah, got stuck in portals. And, and uh, what's his name? The other dude that would do space adventures in the old school. Oh, Buck Rogers. Buck, Buck Rogers, Rogers in definitely. The comics. And the witch is like a perfect horror host. I, I really liked her issue. You got the, the cabin in the woods and um, misunderstood. It was like Witch. the, uh, what is his name from the Tales of the Crypt? The Crypt Keeper? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, that's like a throwback to like the EC Comics horror. But yeah. She's stuck. She can't. Poor, she... poor, uh, poor Gail. She's just like trapped and hates it. Right. And the covers were fantastic too. Absolutely. Well, all the art throughout the whole book is just so gorgeous. Like, Barb Alien is like, uh, John St John, uh, John Johns. John Johns. It's called uh, Bruce Bruce, or um, what's his name? Mark Mark. Oh. 
In, the fact that he's, yeah. also he's the Marshall Manhunter yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of looks like a also John Carpenter a Mars type character. He's, totally he's a shapeshifter. He's shapeshifter. But he's, happens to also be gay and yeah, he can't really get like a real connection with anybody. Um, there's just so much, man. This book is so heavy. It's heavy, man. It's but so, it 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 goes goes by really quickly and you're you're in, you're encased in this wanting to know everything that's going on and it doesn't feel like it's it's slow and it's right. it's Not a slow all. burn it's like it picks up and you're just going and you're just like damn dude why how are they stuck on this farm and how are they like where'd they come from and like hearing their stories and then um we're seeing um the black hammer's daughters like on the other side it gave me that uh that feel from Interstellar. Oh yeah, oh, it gave me it gave me definitely. that Interstellar feel, and it was it's a fantastic. Movie. We've got a it's Abraham's Captain America, Captain America Abraham's story, but he doesn't get injected with the super soldier serum. He just works out and yeah. becomes a boxer and inherits the boxing gym from his his coach because he was killed by the mob who he owed money to, and he he shows his heart and how much he's he just doesn't give up. But he seems happy in this in this spot that he's stuck at because he's got a life going for him that he thinks that he loves. Right. And then we see that Gail is in love with Mark Mark, right. who's in love with his priest. And it's just it's it's, it's, all it's that. real love. It's real world like trials for these superheroes that are all trapped. It's incredible how Jeff Lemire is able to balance these stories out with. Not only trying to, you know, really get in depth with these characters, but also progressing the story and, and showing us the deconstruction of the superhero. Um, like we mentioned, it feels like when Watchmen pretty much summarized the comic book and the superhero from Golden Age until 86, mm -hmm. this kind of picks up where it left off. And then it also incorporates the 90s. Yeah. Right? The 90s. Yeah, I like um, that a lot. <clears throat> the 90s style and the 90s... Uh, 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 everything that that was comic books then and what didn't work yeah. out what did work out and just the way that each the they go about panel layouts for each character speaking really of unique. watchmen colonel weird kind of looks like alan, alan moore, moore. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like alan moore if alan moore didn't condition his hair so well <laughs> but we know that alan moore has a superb uh hair conditioning technique yes. so man it just it's a fantastic read this is only 13 issues and the anniversary There's a lot issue. of tie-ins. There's a lot of tie-ins. And Jeff Lemire also pencil, um, also did the uh, Justice League crossover, which um, definitely is a one that I'm on the hunt for now because I'm definitely interested. There are so many tie-ins. <clears throat> They're not uh, all necessary. The core story here in the first omnibus is, is you know, gives you everything that you need. Uh, but from what I've heard, that the, a lot of those tie-ins are actually fantastic. They just make you feel for those characters even more, which is kind of a testament to Jeff Lemire's. Um, yeah, because we're we're work ethic. we're meeting at them at year ten. Yeah. yeah. So there's so much more to tell from them, and if we want it, they can go back and tell the stories of when they were the superheroes and uh, what's the name of their city? Spiral City. Spiral City. Spiral yeah. City. And it's kind of like there's the the place that they're stuck in. They start. Uh, Lucy starts to realize it's kind of like a Pleasantville type deal yeah, it's totally it's um it's not what it seems it, it's like the perfect story to be trapped in but it's redundant and it it doesn't, doesn't all make all sense. make sense and it's just these characters are stuck and they're a lot of them are just giving up mm -hmm. some give up some have given up and trying to get out and others have not there, there's a mystery at the center of this story that yeah. really drives everything forward it's almost like we're in that drive, and we're in that passenger seat along with those characters. Like we're finding out little snippets at the same time that they are, mm -hmm. and it's almost like yes, of course they're retelling the story of what happened, which is the memories and what we're seeing. Um, the relationships are very important. I think it puts a big, big um, emphasis on relationships and how they're important, you know, to the human, you know, to to us, to our being. Uh, the father-daughter relationship between Black Hammer and his daughter and why she's so adamant about going after him. It, it's just fantastic. I think Jeff Lemire does an amazing job of balancing it out. And speaking of work ethic and how Jeff Lemire actually uh, powered through and did all of these issues, 
uh, Dean also, I think uh, the story goes that he suffered a brain hemorrhage. Yes. Like, I think out in the early issues, and he kind of just, even with his, his, uh, his drawing hand being partially paralyzed, he still powered through and gave us one of the most incredible pieces of, you know, uh, comic book history, I guess. This, is, this has to be history, man. The way that oh, they absolutely. go about telling the story and what these heroes are. And, like, look at that, man. Like, look at that. That's just... It's incredible because I, I had heard before we'd read, I'd heard that he he'd suffered um, basically like a stroke. And, and I was like, all right, like, let's see where that happens. And you if any, tell. you can't tell. You if can't anything, tell, it just man. gets better. Like, yeah. it just gets better and better. It's so complete and good and just... And this is what we were talking about, the 90s. If you go back one page, I thought this was fantastic. We all know who yeah. this is homaging right here. Who they're trying to How reference there. Are How many pouches do you need? Let's go to that. that Let's go. I love that, When though, he's actually because, in yeah, the Yeah, there you yeah. go. There it is. So fun. And then we got, like, that Kirby-esque monster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there, that Goo Man. He's like, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, this is a fantastic read. If you have a chance, if you never read Black Hammer, we've never talked to Jeff Lemire, but would would you say it's Magnus o Magnum Opus? Or do you I'd think? say it's pretty pretty high up there, man. This is about as near a perfect comic as I can think of. And and I know we were talking a lot about like, oh, it's deconstructing, and this hero's like this hero, and you know, like all of that. But I don't think you need all that comics history to enjoy that the book i think it if if anything it would serve as like um a good starting point a good starting point yeah. exactly it's like oh like that character was interesting i might like to go back and look but at the same time it's like it's perfectly like contained in its own world you don't need all the other stuff and when you think about comics in general like mary uh or what was her name uh, uh mary marvel or gail no, um gail um, being like the golden age hero, being stuck, feeling like they can't do anything. Honestly, man, golden I don't know if, if I'm if mm. I'm if I'm Golden Gale, yeah, digging really deep. Or I'm, I'm probably reaching on this, but I was telling you guys about how I felt like that was almost like graded comics. It's like there's so much history there. It's it's beautiful, you know. There's there's so much more in depth to that person, to that character, to those books. But when you seal them up and you keep them the same condition forever, you don't allow them to breathe. You don't allow them to exist. You don't get to know what's actually in those pages. I kind of saw it like that. It might be reaching and it might be, but that's how I interpreted it. It was like a graded comic from the golden age. It's beautiful. Right. It's cool. It's neat. It's pretty to look at just like this little, you know, cute, pretty seven year old. But you don't know the reality what's inside, you know, what are they about? Sometimes we get these these books and they say, you know, this is the first appearance of so and so, and then we go through, we read them, and we're like, whoa, this is way different than what we ever imagined. Totally. But you wouldn't get that if you just kept it sealed up. Definitely. Right? That's just how I felt with that. I was like, man, is, is it, if that's what he's doing, that's freaking amazing. You read did an comics. amazing job. But read your comics. Yeah, read your comics. And I mean, like I said, this came out during a hiatus in our lives, but I'm so happy that we got to find it now because it's like going back, and it's also yeah, beautiful. It's it's. It's also a testament that there are always books that you can go back and check out and read, and, and it's never too late to jump into something. You get something. these at the library. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But this, like I said, this has just been a fantastic read so far. I honestly cannot wait until the second omnibus, um, just because it's very difficult to find those single issues. Um, and I just feel like this book is, is one of those books that probably isn't talked about a lot. Maybe it was a few years ago, but I think it's time to restart and continue that conversation because, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, we're bold enough to say this is Watchmen level stuff. Absolutely. So, so yeah, check, check it, out. it out, man. Pick Highly it up. recommended. If there's any other book, if you guys don't watch any other video, you guys don't take any one of our, uh, uh, other of our recommendations. At least take this one, Black Hammer. Definitely, definitely, definitely worth checking out.